Hey everybody, this is Doug with another short video. This one is about remote monitoring. And this one is thanks to a suggestion from a fellow patient. I won't use her full name, but Jen W. Thanks, this is for you. Now remember, I'm not a medical professional giving medical advice. I'm just some guy on the internet. Uh, hopefully you'll learn something here though, and you can talk to your doctor, learn more about remote monitoring. And uh, you can also look up that information on your manufacturer's website uh, in their patient section. Hope you enjoy, thanks. All right, let's talk about remote monitoring. What is it? Uh, how does it work? How might it benefit you? Remote monitoring is a way for your device, uh, whether it's a pacemaker or ICD or CRT system or, or a loop recorder, it's a way for your device to communicate with your doctor, giving them information that allows them to keep an eye on your device and its function and make sure everything's running smoothly. Uh, now, not every doctor uses remote monitoring, so you may not be familiar with it, but uh, if you're curious about it, you can ask your doctor and see if they use, that, uh, use this feature. Uh, Medtronic has a system called CareLink, and this is my bedside monitor. There's many different forms of, of uh, remote monitoring. So Medtronic has the CareLink system. Boston Scientific has the Latitude system. Uh, St. Jude Abbott has the Merlin system. I know Biotronic has a version as well. Uh, and there's different versions of it. This is a bedside monitor. This one sits by my bed and uh, records data as needed. There are versions now that are coming out that are app-based, so they're on your phone. Those are brand new. As far as I know, Medtronic is the only uh, pacemaker ICD system. I think it's just a pacemaker right now that has an app. Uh, I believe Boston Scientific has a loop recorder that is app-based. Uh, so there are many different versions. Medtronic even has one. It's an older version where you have a little controller that you put on your device, and that transmits data to an app, which transmits it to your doctor. So. Uh, there's, there's a bunch of different versions. The newest devices are coming out with Bluetooth and they have their own app that pairs with your phone. So different ways that you can get this information to your doctor. How is it used? What, what do we use it for? Um, again, it's, it's to keep an eye on your device, make sure everything's running smoothly. The, the most common way is these bedside monitors. Again, these are the, the older systems, the newer ones are coming out with Bluetooth, but the most common way is these bedside monitors. And the way it works is that your device monitors your, your, um, your system every day. It takes a look to make sure our thresholds rising, is the impedance the same, has anything changed with the system, is there a lead fracture, is the device itself functioning normally. It runs those checks usually every day, sometimes every week, sometimes every month, depending on how the device is programmed. Um, but it runs that check and makes sure everything's running smoothly. If not, your device will try to communicate with your uh, bedside monitor. The communication is one way. Your bedside monitor does not communicate with your device. That doesn't happen. Um, it doesn't call out to your device and say, hey, you know, is there anything you want to tell me? It just listens and it only transmits data. So we don't have to worry about data going from the CareLink monitor to our, our implanted device. If something is wrong, uh, if something goes wrong or something that the device wants to let the doctor know about, it will transmit out and it will look for a remote monitor. Cool thing is, your device can only pair with one remote monitor. So I could be in a home with 10 Medtronic patients, each with our own remote monitor, and my device will only talk to this monitor, my monitor. It won't accidentally talk to my friend's monitor or my, my brother's monitor or whoever else I have in the house. It will only talk to this one monitor that it's programmed to talk to. So we don't have to worry about crosstalk there. But the device will wake up and will say, I have something to transmit and it will look for a remote monitor, it also, or it will look for the, the, the phone that it's connected with. And then it will transmit that data. The transmission only takes a couple of seconds. And if it doesn't connect for some reason, like for example, I go to the cabin and I don't bring my remote monitor with me for a weekend, if my device has an issue that it wants to talk to my remote monitor about and it does not find my remote monitor, it'll check again in a few hours. I think it's every four or six hours. And it will keep doing that for several days until it finds my remote monitor. And if it doesn't find my remote monitor, it will take all the data that it wanted to send and it will save it. It won't delete it, it will save it. So the next time that I connect with my remote monitor or the next time I'm in my office and I have a, you know, a download done where they put the, the programming head on my device, all of the data that my device has collected will go out to the doctor and uh, it won't be lost. So we don't have to worry about that. So what kind of things are, uh, is remote monitoring helpful for? What kind of things does it look for? Uh, well, I'll tell you a personal story that happened to me. I was out having lunch with my wife on a Monday morning when my clinic called me and said, hey, we got a transmission this weekend. I didn't know about it, it just happened. And they said, we're, we're seeing T-wave oversensing. And this is an issue that 
Uh, in a nutshell, it means that my ICD is double counting my heartbeats, which is a problem with ICD patients. If I were to exercise and get up my heart rate up to 150 beats a minute, it means my device thinks I'm clicking along at 300 beats a minute. So big problem. Uh, but the device caught it, it sent it in, and our clinic looked at it and said, we, we just wanna change the sensitivity of your device. So I need to go in and uh, I had to go in and get my, my device reprogrammed basically. But that's kind of what, what it's there for. Uh, also, if, if uh, something goes wrong with the device, if um, your battery level drops all of a sudden, or if a battery drops below a certain point, it will alert the doctor. If the device thinks that a lead is fractured or maybe has become dislodged, it will alert the doctor. And they can look at the data and they can determine, is it something urgent? Do they need you to come in right away? Is it something they need to send you to the emergency room for? But it allows them to monitor your device, keep an eye on your settings, keep an eye on the function of the device and determine if there's any problems that they need you to come in and, and they can resolve right away or, you know, uh, maybe uh, have to go to the hospital for some reason, but it just allows them to keep an eye on your device and keep an eye on your condition. They can also tell if things are changing, such as um, fluid levels in your body, uh, maybe your activity level has dropped. They, they can use that information to help determine that your condition is worsening and they maybe, maybe need to inter intervene. So a lot of different ways that remote monitoring can help you. Now, typically the remote monitors are just a passive item. They just sit there and they're waiting for information to come to them. Sometimes though, patients want to send information themselves. Uh, so there is a function where you can take this little device, you put it over your device and you press this button. It will cause the device to uh, transmit data that it has stored. It will go through your, your home monitor, your uh, remote monitor, and will go to the doctor. Um, some people will do this when you know they feel palpitations or they got lightheaded. Uh, unfortunately, if, if it wasn't a, um, something that your device would normally record, just by sending a remote transmission, you're really unlikely to capture anything that you would have felt. So if it was something serious enough that the device would have recorded on its own, it's likely something that would have been transmitted anyway. Um, and that's something I've learned is that uh, they don't really capture anything if it, if it happens you know, five minutes after the fact and I go and I do a remote transmission, it's not really gonna capture anything unless the device caught it itself. One thing to be aware of is that most insurance companies do not cover the costs of um, remote transmissions or they only cover so many. This is something I learned when I did a remote transmission on my own. Uh, my, my insurance company covers three remote transmissions a year. So that fourth one, that cost me about $260. So something to be aware of, of uh, you know, one thing to keep in mind if you wanna actually send a transmission or not. One thing people are worried about uh, that's come up in the news lately is hacking. Is it possible to hack our device through our remote monitor? Now I've talked with engineers from Medtronic, Boston Scientific and St. Jude before it became Abbott. And uh, regardless of what I've heard in the news, I'm comfortable with the fact that my, my remote monitor is secure. I know the things that they're working on, uh, they're, they're putting so many security measures in place that it's really, really unlikely that anybody could actually hack our device through the remote monitor. It's never actually been done in real life, and uh, I don't think it is something we need to worry about. One last thing some people ask uh, is, do I need to take my remote monitor with me on vacation when I leave the home? Uh, it's a personal decision. Um, it, it's something that depends on your condition and how often you have episodes. Personally for me, I very rarely have anything that happens. I don't take mine with me when I go on vacation. Uh, I was just in Europe for 10 days. I did not take mine with me. I go to the cabin all the time, long weekends. I don't take it with me. It's a personal decision. Um, uh, so you can make that, maybe you can talk with your doctor and make that decision for, for yourself whether or not you take it. But if you do, these are based uh, mostly on cellular networks. So as long as you have a cellular connection, you'll, you'll have a connection for your remote monitor. Some are, are um, uh, Wi-Fi enabled and Bluetooth enabled. You have to learn about your each individual one to find out if, if that's the case with yours. Uh, but as long as you have a cellular connection anywhere in the world, it should work. Um, personally, I had problems with mine in Mexico and I also had problems in St. Lucia where it wouldn't connect. And, uh, you know, just the way it goes, sometimes you don't have a cellular connection strong enough. And then likely you won't need it anyway. Uh, but it's a personal decision. You can take it with you if you want. Um, maybe discuss with your doctor if you, if you should take it with you on, on vacations. Well, that's about it. That's uh, remote monitoring in a nutshell. There's uh, more information you can learn on your manufacturer's website. Uh, most of them also have videos about remote monitoring where you can learn more. And you can always talk to your, your clinic or your doctor's office if you wanna have a little bit more information on that. So I hope it was all helpful and thanks for watching.